This is Mag Mag Max Headroom, and what you're about to witness is one of the most sinister-sounding intros to one of the greatest epics ever produced. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Dude Looks Like the 80s. I'm your host RJ McCready and in this episode we're going to be taking you guys back down under for some more Ozploitation and this time it's going to be 1986 movie Dead End Driving, the Dicetopian action adventure movie. So let's play you guys a trailer and... I'll tell you all about this movie. <laughs> I'll see you guys soon. Here now the news for July 4th, 1995. In the wake of widespread economic collapse, so officials are reporting massive general strikes. In the 1970s, there was Clockwork Orange. Then in the 1980s came Mad Max and the Road Warrior. Now comes a startling new vision that takes you into the apocalypse and beyond. Back to the old drive-in you used to know and love. Only now, when the show is over, there is no way out. Dead end drive-in. Right now, not getting through to you, am I, son? No cabs, no buses, no transport. So, you're here, you're here, you're here. What to do with you? Government, government, go, 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 go. This is your heart. You can't tell me they don't want to get out. Now, now. Yeah, but they know they can't, son. There's no future. No future. Come with me. God, Jimmy, can't you see? This is all we've got. Get out of here. And don't you try and stop me again. Now get out of the way! Hey! Like it or not. Dead end drive in. And welcome back, everybody. So, let's tell you about this film. Um, let's tell you about how I found this film. It's the last couple of years. There's um, a company called Arrow that has released all these films from say the 80s, probably the 70s, uh, all the VHS movies that uh, didn't make it onto DVD back in the 90s, I would say. So they're coming out now. I'd never seen this film before until I saw it posted on the on Facebook from Duncan McLeish on Podcast Under the Stairs. Um, so I thought I'd go and check it out. I like the look of the front cover. Um, if anybody knows me... Um, I think Tam Bone will <laughs> definitely agree on this. This type, this is my sort of film. Um, I post all these types of movies on my Facebook page all the time. And I was very pleasantly surprised. I sat down and I watched it and I came away and I thought it just ticked all the boxes for me. It had a good, good soundtrack. I liked the story. It had a point to the story. Um, and it stayed with me in a funny sort of way, in a way that it really shouldn't stay with me, if that makes sense. Because I can go and watch a $100 million movie at the cinema, and everybody's talking about it, and I can come out and go, I don't know what that was all about, it didn't really do anything for me. Then I'll pick up a film like this, it shouldn't, it should not work as a B-movie. 
I can see why other people would watch it and go, oh, what was all that about? But for me personally, it worked. For some, whatever reason, go see it, go watch it yourself, make your own mind up about it. But I will talk about this movie and I'll tell you about why I like it. And um, like I say, <laughs> it's, I, sh- I keep saying it to myself, I shouldn't really like this film, but I do. It's. I'm sure everybody out there listening to this podcast probably has a movie like that. So if you do, post it on the page. Let me know. It'd be interesting to see what what, what you guys um, have to say about that. So let's get into this movie. So the synopsis for this film is: in the near future, a teenage couple are trapped in a drive-in theater, which has become a concentration camp for social outcasts. The inmates are treated to drugs, exploitation films, junk food and new wave music. It's got a 92 minute runtime. It's classed as a action drama horror. I don't know where the horror elements, it might just be to do with the beginning of the movie, which we'll get into later. It was directed, or it has been directed by Brian Trenchard-Smith, um, who was Australian. He did a couple of movies, uh, one of them being the BMX Bandits. And another film called The Quest or The Go Kids, which I think was a kind of Australian spin on The Goonies, just to name just a few movies. I think this film was also in the Australian documentary Not Quite Hollywood, which is worth checking out. And it stars Ned Manning, who plays the main uh, protagonist in this film, Jimmy uh, Krabs, which is his, his nickname. And uh, Natalie Mercury plays his girlfriend, Carmen, and Pete Whitford, who plays Thompson, who is the main character of the um, camp. So it's not really anybody famous in this movie, um, but these actors do a really good job, I think. Well, let's get into this movie. So I'm not going to do a scene by scene of what goes on this on this film, like you usually do. Um, so I'm just going to sort of give you a bit of a synopsis on this whole movie and what I think about it on the whole if someone was to ask me sort of like in a sort of bit of a bite sized thing where the point of this movie which I really like which was one of the draws about it was the fact that the main character he is he's a good guy he's he's trying to do well for himself in this sort of like almost post apocalyptic environment and he's got a girlfriend and, you know, he's trying to sort of keep himself employed. He goes out running, which is a good thing at the beginning of this film. And he is made to go into this camp with his girlfriend, just a drive-in theatre. And then once he gets there, he gets trapped. And basically what the government are doing here is that they're keeping all the kids in one place. And they are giving them everything that you would normally do as a rebelling teenager, if that makes sense. So they give you alcohol, they give them sort of horror movies to watch, um, give them food. And they don't have to pay for anything, any of this. They just basically get coupons. But Ned, or Jimmy in this case, and this is what I like about it, is that he is rebelling against all the things that you would usually rebel against being a teenager. So that's quite a good spin on it. And he doesn't want to be trapped in this place. And he's trying to work a way out of it. But there's like electric fences surrounding the driving. And there's, a, I think it's a four kilometre road, which you need to drive down, which he can't get out of because he doesn't have a car. And the police are corrupt. The guy who's man in the um, driving, he's corrupt as well. And all the kids in the camp have kind of bought into it. But he's walking around and he's like going, well, no, I don't really want to get involved. And I don't really want to make friends with you. And I don't really want to have this junk food. But the good thing about Jimmy is he's not your typical sort of, how can I put it? Sort of like a sort of nerdy wimp, if that makes sense, who would usually... Um, not buying to all this. He is actually a badass. But he's like saying, look, I just don't want to be like you guys. I just want to be myself. You know, I want to work out. I want to keep myself fit. I want to get out of this place. I want to get my own job. And 
I think that's what I like about this film. It's 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 really sort of telling you a a story which is also surrounded by everything that you would find in a B movie. So you've got cheap sets, you've got graffiti everywhere, you've got real explosions that happen for the you know special effects and You've got a really good soundtrack to this movie as well, which I like. It hasn't just got one song. It hasn't got just two songs or three. It's got about five different songs in this, which are very catchy. And I think all those songs made it into the charts, and I think they did probably better than the actual film itself, which is crazy. Um, So there's a really good building block, and I think it's really important for a film not to just have all the special effects and stuff like that. This film's got a really good story, which really drew me in which I liked and it's something that you can take away from but it's not done um how can I explain it it's it's done in a really good way it's it's very clever so compliments to the director and the writer of this movie they just um it it's really good but then that story could be overlooked by the B movie if that makes sense where people would go it's a B movie it it looks rubbish if that makes sense you know what I mean and I think that could quite easily get overlooked. But moving on from that, um, the other thing you got in this film, you've got a really good, um, really good stunt scene at the end. So Jimmy manages to escape. His girlfriend, he tries to get her to come with him, but she's sold with the camp. She wants to stay there. So he does everything he can to try and get her out, but she wants to stay. So he, he he's, he's fine with that. And he has a really good... It's a really good climatic scene where he has a fight with the police. He has a shootout, there's a gunfight. He manages to steal a police car. And then he drives out the camp onto a ramp. And he does, I think it's like a 165-foot stunt, which was a world record at the time. I think it's almost like a sort of evil Knievel stunt in a car. And it's pretty impressive. And I think that's where they spent most of the budget for the film. And then Jimmy gets out, and that's it. You see him ride ride out from the camp. So that is pretty much the movie in a nutshell. As I said, I won't go into it too much, but I will bring up a few things with it. Which Other things which I liked about the movie was um, there's some really good way the film started as the intro. It started off like a, kind of like a sort of, reminded me of an 8-bit video game where you've got the title that comes onto the screen, you've got a new wave, one of the new wave um, songs which I mentioned comes on, really catchy song, and it immediately caught my attention, and you've got Jimmy um, running in some night trainers, and then throughout this film you've got some easter eggs, Uh, you've got, there's a poster that comes up with Rambo 8, Rambo Takes Russia, and not to forget, this is one of Quentin Tarantino's favourite movies for in the exploitation world. And when you look at the some of the graffiti in the camp, I just noticed, because I was a little bit more, when I'd sort of take notes for the podcast, I noticed that there's a bit of graffiti saying, from dusk till dawn. And I thought, that's weird, because obviously Quentin Tarantino made that movie. And him being a fan of this movie, just don't know, I'm, make your own mind up about that. <laughs> There's also a bit of graffiti on there saying Die Hard, and this came out a couple of years before Die Hard. So did Dead End Drive and predict movies of the future? I don't know. So there's a little little bit of strangeness there. But there you go, guys. On the whole, that is Dead End Drive. That's my that's my mini review on it, really. That's my my take on it. That's basically what I came away with. So if you fancy watching a B movie, an exploitation film, I'd recommend this. Um, it'd certainly be a good double bill with, um, say, like a Mad Max film. I think you'd, you know, if you had an evening of that, I think these two movies would certainly complement each other very nicely. And I think that you'd get one over the other with putting them two together. And again, Dead End Drive, it just, it's, it's not a movie to take itself seriously, but that's not taking any credit away from what the director is trying to put here. I think he's put a very good story together. I think it's something different. I think it's um, in today of independent film making, especially with what I'm seeing at the um, sort of horror film festivals and films that are coming out. I think actually this type of movie is actually coming back in the independent market. 
And um, this is what people are trying to get back, especially with the um, 80s fetish that we've got going on at the moment. So even though the film didn't do very well, this is the type of film that people are trying to capture now uh, with that sort of 80s vibe. That's what I said earlier, where at the beginning of the film, you've got that sort of new wave 8-bit look to it. That's why I said it's... It felt to me sort of like, my, I guess you could say my vinyl verdict of this film is, it felt like a film that someone had made today. If this film came out in 2020, say now, I'd go, yeah, I kind of get that as a sort of homage to the 80s films. So, um, yeah, go check it out, guys. It's a good movie. And that's pretty much it, really. That is dead end driving. So hopefully you enjoyed that, guys. Um to let you know what I'm going to be doing next uh, is going to be my final exploitation film. It's one of my favourite films from the 80s, one of my favourite comedy films, which is Crocodile Dundee. I need to talk about that. We're going down under, we need to talk about Crocodile Dundee. And I should hopefully have a guest on the show for that, which is Witch from the Doomsday Clock podcast. Uh, we are trying to get a date sorted out where we can talk about that movie. So hopefully that will be um, dropping soon. So watch out for that so guys that's it that's the end of the show um i'll see you soon keep it 80s out there and take care everybody see you guys later